And so let's get a bunch of those. And I'm taking it right up to where the reintro happens. Let's do, check that. Right, good. So we've got the change from the ride to the open hi hat for the chorus. Now let's uh, get some kick drum and some snare. There's kick. And there's snare, and we're going to take that to the uh, pre-chorus. Maybe that's a good place for the drums to come in. I think we can get, we can stay pretty simple for this. Chorus. Let's catch that one accent on the uh, strum. I think that's where it is. So that is uh, one progression. It's two times through the progression for the pre-chorus, and I think the drums sound okay, so I can duplicate that out. Kick. And uh, we're going to have the drums... And then the chorus is coming up, so that's kind of a fill. Let's take this. So I'm going to copy one of these really simple sections to the top of the chorus. And now I just need to figure out where the uh, kick drum and the snare need to be landing. Snare is always going to be here. I'm going to send that out to infinity. And I'm thinking the kick needs to be there. That's good for one progression, just for a starter on the song. And it looks like we need to duplicate that twice. So now I'm going to listen from the pre-chorus. I'm going to turn the ride down a hair. We're going to get some crash cymbals in here. We're going to try and make it sound like a real drummer as best we can. I think that'll work. 
at this point. Take care of this post chorus. And then we'd be right back to the second verse. Okay, it's time for bass, so I'm going to switch over to that right now. Okay, we're going to do bass now. I'm just kind of learning it at this point. We'll keep this as real as possible. This is the entrance for the bass, so I'm going to keep it pretty simple. So then we'd want to be on, let's catch that again. Actually, here's what we're going to do. So now I, I'm going to show off some of the fun arrangement stuff that can happen using technology. And uh, right here we'd be going right back to the re-intro. So I'm going to group all these tracks. We're going to be editing all of them. And let's go to where the vocals would start and we're going to duplicate them and send them so that we would have... This is the first chorus, the post-chorus. Now we're back to... Because I took all of those tracks and I moved them forward. So we've got two cycles of verse and chorus right now. Okay, so we're uh, going to add bass for the second verse. Punching in. out because I already have bass there. So we have a platform right now that sounds like a band playing right up to the bridge and this would allow uh, me to work on a melody for the vocalist or it would be um, a great chance for the singer or the band to uh, work on a melody that could work with this music. So why is this process important? 
It's important because it allows the artist and the producer to cost-effectively evaluate different arrangement possibilities. So once that is done, real drums can be added, real guitar tracks, keeper bass, keeper background vocals, and keeper vocal tracks are added. The interesting thing about this process is that nothing that is heard now will be in the final product.